Up to this point, we've been talking about various inventory management strategies and what inventory management means to an organization, why it's important, the financial impact that it can have, and why we need to have inventory uh, on the shelves or in our production facilities when we need them to either help uh, make our raw materials go from, from, raw, from raw materials to whip to finished goods. We need them as part of that value transformation process, so we need to have the inventory there so that we can manufacture the goods that we are producing internally or so that we can sell them to our customers. So inventory management is a big part of being able to support our customer requirements. And finding that balance of having the right inventory on hand to um, lower our costs and minimize costs while also meeting our customer demands is the fundamental principle of inventory management. To help us do that, there's a few different um, inventory management strategies that we can incorporate. And one of them that's used all over the place, uh, and you're going to see it uh, many times in your life, most likely, uh, whether you're working in a manufacturing firm or a service industry, uh, service industry is an economic order quantity. And an economic order quantity is helping us to find um, the right amount of total inventory. We want to reduce the amount of inventory that we bring into our facility while still having the right amount to support our requirements. So the EOQ model, which we're going to talk about in this video, is a great strategy for helping to um, uh, manage your inventory, having the right amount of inventory on hand uh, when you need it. Um, and so we'll know the right amount of materials to order, hence the economic order quantity. So what is an EOQ? What is the economic order quantity? It's a classic model developed to minimize total annual inventory cost. Okay, we want to minimize our total annual inventory costs. And we'll go over the formula here in the next couple slides, but there's a few things we need to understand about EOQs um, so that we can um, not only calculate well what the appropriate EOQ is, but also as we tweak it and revise it, understand the impact it's gonna have on our organization. So the economic order quantity model assumes that there's only one product is involved at a time. So you're going to calculate an EOQ per SKU, per stock keeping unit. So we'll calculate one EOQ per product. The demand for that product, because it's an independent demand item, is constant and independent of other decisions for other items. Okay, so the demand is known and it's independent of other items. One of the fundamental principles of an economic order quantity is that when we calculate out the EOQ and we make the determination of what that EOQ is, uh, we assume that the entire order quantity is going to be received in a single delivery. So if we calculate an EOQ of 250 pieces, we order that 250 pieces, we assume that we will receive the 250 pieces when we order them from a supplier. The late time, uh, which is the time between placement and receipt of an order, is known and constant, so it's not going to change on us. If we go and create an order and we assume that it's going to arrive in three weeks, well, then it needs to arrive in three weeks. The next assumption of the EOQ model is that quantity discounts are not possible. Okay, so quantity discounts are not possible. We'll talk about that a little bit more later in, um, and how important quantity discounts are to inventory management and making the right purchasing decisions. But for sake of the model, quantity discounts are not possible. And then there's only two types of costs that are relevant. That's the setup and ordering costs. Those words can be used interchangeably between order costs and setup costs. And holding costs and carrying costs. Those words can also be used interchangeably. And then the last assumption is that stockouts or shortages can be completely avoided if orders are placed at the right time. Now, the EOQ model is great. I've used it everywhere that I've worked. I've used it in manufacturing. I now use it in healthcare. Calculating EOQs is absolutely an important strategy and method for reducing inventory and making sure that you have the right amount of inventory on hand at any given time. A lot of these assumptions, though, are incorrect in real life. I think we've talked about this already a little bit before, but uh, the entire order quantity is received in a single delivery. You are at the mercy of your suppliers to deliver the quantities that you order, and they may or may not deliver that quantity. As we've seen over the last couple of years with the uh, global pandemic, that you might order products 
and they don't come in on time like you think that they're going to, and they might not come in at the quantity that they're that they were supposed to. So lead time, known and constant, again, um, that lead times change all the time. So you really have to be cautious when you're creating an EOQ to give yourself a little bit of that buffer like we've talked about with either buffer stock or safety stock. Quantity discounts are not possible. Also, um, quantity discounts are uh, possible a lot of the time. So again, the EOQ model is great. Don't get me wrong. Again, I've used it everywhere that I've that I've ever worked um, for the last 20 plus years. But you just need to take this model and some of the assumptions with a grain of salt because a lot of these assumptions do change and there are things you need to take into consideration as you create an EOQ in your workplace. For sake of getting the right answer in this course, everything on this page applies and lead times will always be constant. There are no quantity discounts and whatever you order, you will receive in, a, in, in that one delivery. So for sake of this course, uh, I'm gonna teach you the EOQ model you go ahead and you calculate those EOQs exactly how you learn them. But when you get into the workforce, remember that you've, you've got to be able to have a little bit of flexibility with some of these EOQs uh, when you go out there and do it for your workplace. Okay, so one thing to look at with the EOQs. Um, the EOQ, uh, or any order quantity for that matter, if you look at the inventory cycle of when items are received and then they are used, your inventory is going to be reduced after receipt and through your manufacturing process. So in the top left hand corner, you can see you've got your queue. And for sake of conversation, let's say that your queue is you're ordering a hundred pieces at a time. Okay. You order a hundred pieces at a time. That's your queue or your economic order quantity. You receive those hundred pieces and then in your facility, you use and use and use your inventory. So that's the usage rate. If you receive a hundred units, you're going to wait until you get down to zero units before you receive your next order of a hundred pieces. So you get a hundred, you use them uh, throughout your process. You work your way all the way down to zero and then voila, your next order of a hundred arrives. You use those hundred, you get all the way down to zero and your next order of a hundred arrives. So in that perfect case scenario, your average inventory is just 100 because hundreds are example here divided by two. So your average on hand inventory is going to be 50. 100 divided by two is 50. So that would be your average inventory that is on hand. The reorder point, which we talk about in a separate video, it can be whatever you determine it to be based off of what your lead time is. So in this small triangle down here at the bottom, if you believe that it takes a one week lead time to receive your products, however many items you use within that one week, that would be your reorder point. So if you're using 33 of these items per week uh, and it's got a one week lead time, then once your reorder, once you, your inventory falls below 33 pieces, which is your reorder point, you would reorder more. And right when you get down to zero, your next order for 100 would arrive. So that is your inventory cycle. What you see on the page is a, again, it's a perfect case scenario. And if this were, uh, if the time period were one year, then your inventory turnover for this item would be three. Okay, inventory turns. If this was a one year time period, you're receiving a hundred pieces, you use it up, you receive another hundred pieces, you use it all up, you receive another hundred pieces, you use it all up. So therefore you turn over your inventory three times per year. And if uh, you were calculating out your inventory turns, it would be three in this example. Okay, so let's go back to talking about the economic order quantity. And with the economic order quantity, conceptually, you need to understand that there's two different kinds of costs. There's your holding costs and your ordering costs. So this slide specifically talks about the average inventory level and the number of orders. So on the top, when you place uh, many orders and those orders have a smaller quantity, you're gonna have a lower average inventory because you're going to be buying smaller quantities. So if we go back to the example here and I said that Q was 100, our average inventory was half of that or 50. 
So if we go to this slide, and let's say we now store, start to order 50 at a time, our average inventory will now be 25. So we've cut our inventory effectively in half by placing more orders, uh, and that's going to lower our average inventory. When we have fewer orders, orders at the bottom, fewer orders produce a higher average inventory over time. But there's a gotcha in all of this. It is great to order many orders of a smaller quantity, and that will bring your holding costs down, but your ordering costs will go up. Okay, your ordering costs will go up, or your setup costs will go up, because now instead of receiving three orders of 100, so your buyer's placing three orders, your, your stock clerks are receiving three orders of 100, your inventory clerks are putting away three orders of 100. Now all of those people are doing double work. They're now placing six purchase orders, they're receiving six orders, and then they're putting into inventory six orders. So you've cut your average inventory in half, but your setup cost or your ordering costs have now increased because you're just changing it from being a holdup cost to a setup cost. So that's something to keep in mind as we continue to work on the economic order quantity calculation. Okay, so here is the EOQ uh, model. It's a classic one uh, where it was developed in the early 1900s to help minimize total cost. And again, the whole key of, of the EOQ is to minimize that total cost. It's the sum of the inventory holding cost, or an H, and the setup or ordering costs, which is an S. So our Q is the number of units per order. Our Q with the asterisk is the optimum number of units per order, or our economic order quantity. Our uppercase D is an annual demand. So the annual demand uh, will be uh, given to you. And if the monthly demand is given to you, to you, then you will just need to multiply the monthly demand by 12 to get your annual demand. So Q is the number of units per order. Q with the asterisk is the optimum number of units per order. So your, that's your EOQ and D is your annual demand. The reason why there's a difference in your number of units per order, your Q and your Q with the asterisk is because you can calculate out what your economic order quantity is and still buy a different quantity. So if you calculate that your EOQ is 298 units, you might decide as an organization you'd just rather order 300. So you're not actually ordering the EOQ, and you'd be ordering just the Q, the number of units per order. So the top formula that you see here is your annual inventory holding cost. That's the average inventory, okay, average inventory, multiplied by the annual holding cost per unit. So your Q divided by two multiplied by H gives you your annual inventory holding cost. Your annual ordering cost is your number of units, uh, a number of orders per year, okay, your number of orders per year multiplied by your setup cost uh, per order. So your annual demand divided by your number of units per order multiplied by the setup cost. So that gives you your annual ordering cost. So to get your total annual cost, you're going to take your annual setup cost and your annual holding cost, and you're going to add them together, and that gives you your total cost. So again, let's just go back to this last slide. Your annual inventory holding cost is Q divided by 2 multiplied by H, and your annual ordering cost is D divided by Q multiplied by S. We, to get our total cost, are adding those two together. So that gives us our total annual cost. The optimum order quantity or our economic order quantity, is the order quantity that minimizes the total cost expressed in the equation above. So EOQ is also known as the economic order quantity, and that is the formula in the second box. So it is the square root of 2 multiplied by your annual demand, multiplied by your setup cost, divided by your holding cost. So that gives you your economic order quantity. Your uppercase N is your orders per year, and that is calculated by taking your annual demand divided by the number of units per order, 
and your t is the time between orders, and that's just the number of working days divided by n, which is your number of orders per year. Okay, so these are all very important uh, calculations and formulas that you will need to have. Uh, again, total cost is just the annual cost, uh, annual setup cost plus the annual holding cost, and then the EOQ is the square root of two multiplied by the annual demand and the setup cost divided by the holding. Okay, so your total cost curve. The total cost curve is a U-shaped curve. And your holding costs are linear. They continue to go up as you get more and more inventory and your ordering cost gets higher. Uh, or your, your, sorry, your quantity gets higher. So your holding costs go up as your order quantity goes higher. Your ordering costs go down as you order more because you're placing less orders. So in the past, I have historically been able to calculate out how much an order costs my team. And so we take into consideration how much my buyers make per hour, how much the stockroom clerks make per hour, how much the inventory uh, um, clerks make per hour. You add up all of their hourly wages and how long it takes for them to place an order, receive an order, put it all into stock. And for me, that's how we calculated our setup or our ordering costs. What I always determined um, in, in manufacturing was that we would rather have more orders because our ordering costs were less than our holding costs. We had expensive products, so the holding costs were more expensive. So for us, it made sense to create more orders and receive smaller batch because we wanted that annual inventory to be lower. So your holding costs are linear. Your uh, ordering costs are not, they're non-linear and they go down as the order quantity gets higher. Where your holding costs and your ordering costs intersect is your economic order quantity right here in the middle. So in the next couple examples, when we go over the EOQ, what you're going to see is your holding cost and your ordering costs will be the same. And that's how you know you've got your economic order quantity calculation correct. Okay, so let's do an example together. A local distributor for a national tire company expects to sell approximately 9,600 steel belted radial tires of a certain size and tread design next year. Annual carrying costs are $16 per tire and ordering costs are $75. The distributor operates 288 days per year. So what we want to calculate out is what is our economic order quantity? How many orders per year are expected? What is the expected time between orders? And what is the total annual cost if the economic order quantity is ordered? So here is everything that was given to you. Your demand, your uppercase D, is 9,600 tires per year. Your holding cost is $16 per tire, and your setup cost is $75 per order. You are operating 288 working days per year. So up at the top, you can see that I've got your, your formula already for the economic order quantity and total cost. So I'm gonna sit here for just a second, let you grab a piece of paper. And I know you're just listening to a lecture recording and, and you, you don't wanna break out that piece of paper and you're hoping I'll just move along here, but grab a piece of paper and let's do some of these together. So the first thing let's calculate is your economic order quantity. You have all of the information that you need. You know what your annual demand is. You know what your setup cost is per order and you were provided your holding cost per tire. So you can very easily calculate your economic order quantity uh, for uh, tires, how many tires you should order at any given time. I'll give it a few more seconds here. Okay, so 9,600, that's how many tires you per year you have is your annual demand. $75 is your setup cost and 16 is your holding cost. So therefore, your economic order quantity is 300 tires per year. Next, we wanna calculate the number of orders per year. And that formula was simply your annual demand divided by 
the economic order quantity. Okay, so your annual demand divided by the economic order quantity, and that's your N, your number of orders per year. So take a second and try and figure out the N, your number of orders per year, which is your annual demand of 9,600 tires per year, divided by 300 tires as your economic order quantity, and therefore you're going to place 32 orders per year. Next, we're going to try and calculate our expected time between orders. And that formula was your number of working days per year divided by your N, which is your number of orders per year. So as you can see, given to you was 288 working days per year. And you've now calculated that your orders per year is 32 orders. So you're simply going to take 288 days divided by 32 orders, and you are going to place an order every nine days. So let's just think about this real quick. Everything that's been given to us. You're a purchasing team. You're going to buy 300 tires per order. You're going to place an order every nine days and therefore, when you place them every nine days, you're going to do that 32 times per year. Okay, and that will give you your annual demand of 9,600 tires per year. We're not done yet. Now that we've calculated out our economic order quantity, we can calculate out the total cost. And the total cost is our setup costs plus our holding costs. So, if you look on the far left, okay, we now have our economic order quantity. We can calculate our setup costs. That's $9,600, uh, sorry, 9,600 as our annual demand, divided by our economic order quantity, which is 300, multiplied by 75, which is our setup cost, plus 300, which is our economic order quantity, divided by 2, multiplied by our holding cost, which gives us uh, which is 16. What you can see here is our setup costs equal $2,400 per year and our holding costs equal $2,400 per year. So when you add $2,400 plus $2,400 you get $4,800 and that's your total cost. And we know that our total cost is the minimum total cost because our setup cost and our holding costs are exactly the same. So if we're using our economic order quantity, our setup cost equals our holding cost, and the total cost is minimum, so we know we have it correct for the economic order quantity. Now, here's a little curveball. Remember I told you there's a curveball. We've calculated out that our economic order quantity is 300. And so let's say my purchasing team goes to buy 300 tires from the manufacturer. And the manufacturer says, we're sorry, we only sell them 250 tires at a time. You cannot buy 300 tires as your economic order quantity, even though you want to. You can only buy 250. So we will no longer be buying our economic order quantity. We will just be buying a quantity. And that quantity is now 250. So we can do the same formula for total cost to find our minimum total cost using a, a quantity of 250. So let's do that. All you're doing is changing. Now you've got $250 or 250 tires as your setup cost, and you've got 250 tires as your, um, your uh, order quantity in the holding cost. So whether you're using the setup cost formula or the holding cost formula, the only number that changes is you're ordering 250 tires versus 300. So now what you can see is your setup cost has now increased and your holding cost has decreased. Why? It logically makes sense. You're now ordering 250 tires instead of 300 tires, so your average inventory is going down, but you're going to be placing more orders. You were ordering 32 orders per year when they were at the economic order quantity of 300. 
Now you're placing 250 tires at a time, so your number of orders per year is probably 35, 36, 37. I haven't done the math, but it's going to be higher because you're going to be placing more orders per year because you're doing a smaller quantity. So therefore, your holding costs go down, but your ordering costs go up, and your total order, your total cost, you can see it, it went up. It didn't go up by much. It only went up by $80 per year, but it still went up because you're not ordering the economic order quantity. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's do one more example. Watch a manufacturing assemble security monitors. It purchases 3,600 black and white cathode ray tubes a year at $65 each. Ordering costs are $31, and annual carrying costs are 20% of the purchase price. Watch and builds products 252 days per year. Compute the optimal quantity and the total annual cost of ordering and carrying the inventory. So the only thing that was changed in this example is I gave you the holding cost as a percent of the purchase price. That is very, very common to do. It is a lot easier to assign a 20% holding cost to all of your SKUs than to try and determine an individual holding cost per item. I have managed a bill of materials for manufacturing firms where there's 30,000 different SKUs. We were not going to calculate the uh, holding cost per item and try and make it a fixed number. Instead, we just said holding costs were 20%, and if the cost of the item changed, so did the cost, the holding cost. So this is a very common practice. So we want to figure out what our EOQ is, how many orders per year expect are expected, what's the expected time between orders, and the total annual cost if we're ordering the economic order quantity. So the only difference this time is now we have to calculate the holding cost for our units. So it is 20% of the purchase price. The purchase price was $65 that was given to you. So therefore, for this SKU, your holding cost is $13 per unit. So calculate the EOQ. Grab that piece of paper one more time and let's calculate the EOQ with the information that has been provided to you. You've got your annual demand of the CRTs, which is 3,600 tubes per year. You know that your setup cost is $31 per order, and you've calculated now that your holding cost is $13 per unit. So take a second and calculate the EOQ. Okay. Hopefully you got 131 CRTs. Now let's calculate out the number of orders per year. That's our N. So we are going to be taking our annual demand, which is 3,600, and we're going to simply divide that by our economic order quantity. So to get your number of orders per year, you're taking 3,600 divided by 131, your EOQ, and that gives you 27.4, which you would round up to 28 orders so that you could fulfill your annual demand. You don't round down. Okay, next, let's get our expected time between orders. This is just your working days per year divided by your N, which is your number of orders per year. So this one is also relatively simple. You are now going to take 252 days that was given to you, and you will divide it by 28 orders per year. And your expected time between orders is nine days. It's a sheer coincidence that it's nine days on this example, just like it was on the last one. Okay, so every nine days, you will order 131 CRTs. And then last but not least, let's calculate our total cost. Our total cost is our setup costs plus our holding costs. We have all of the information now that we need to solve this equation. 3,600 tubes per year, that's our annual demand, divided by 131, which is our economic order quantity, multiplied by $31, which is your setup cost per order. That gives you $852 per year as your annual setup costs. 
On the right hand side, you're going to take 131 CRTs, which is your economic order quantity, divided by two, which is your, you know, you're getting your average annual inventory. And you're going to multiply that by $13, which is your holding cost, which you calculated from $65 per SKU multiplied by 20 cents, and that gives you your $13. So 131 divided by 2 multiplied by 13 gives you $852 as your annual holding costs. And because your annual setup costs and your annual holding costs equal the same number, which is $852, your annual total cost to buy the economic order quantity is $1,704. Okay, using the economic order quantity model, your total costs are $1,704. And you know that you have it right because those two numbers match. So that is the classic economic order quantity model. Uh, it is a very, very useful uh, formula for helping to minimize total inventory, bringing in the right amounts um, to support your requirements while also reducing the amount of inventory that you have on hand. So that's the economic order quantity.